Glory Divine World Ministries is a place to call home. Come and allow God to unleash your potential, purpose, and destiny. The way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through Him and through the blood of Jesus. Because of His unconditional love, hallelujah, He sent His only begotten Son, and that is Jesus Christ, to die so He can reconcile Himself to you. to come and be a part of our glory divine family you never choose jesus he chose you welcome to glory divine network tv with your host apostle ryan suknanan let's get ready to listen to the divinely inspired word of god on you every morning yes, lord, lord jesus we thank you father god for what you have done for us the seven days oh god yes, we thank jesus. you father god that the supernatural will invade the natural today father god we thank you father god that you will seal father god everything that we have asked you for father god according to your word that whatever we ask for in prayer oh god that we must believe oh god yes, for you already know before we bring it before for you father god we thank you lord jesus that you are still a miracle working god oh god we thank you father god that you are still all powerful lord yes, god lord. we thank you that you are still the same yesterday today and forevermore oh god yes, we god. give you all the glory all the praise and all the honor in jesus name Amen. can we put our hands above our heads and clap for jesus hallelujah yes. Amen. I know you can do better than that this morning. Can we clap for the King of Kings and for the Lord of Lords? Hallelujah. Amen. Church, we greet you all in the wonderful and the powerful name of Jesus this morning. A special greeting to our dad and our mom as well as a welcome. Hallelujah. Are you blessed to be found in the presence of the Lord? I can't hear you, church. Are you blessed to be found in the presence of the Lord? Amen. This is glory divine, a place to call home. We also want to welcome our online viewers. Thank you for joining us. Are you ready to praise the Lord this morning? Amen. If you're visiting us for the first time, this is a place to call home. Hallelujah. Church of God, today is the seventh and the final day of our sacrificial breakthrough fast. Hallelujah. Has God been good to you? Because I know He's been good to me. Amen. And we trust in God. Now I know that Dad has a five course meal prepared for us. Amen. Did you come expecting to feast of the Lord? Amen. Then you are in the right place. Are you ready, church? Can I hear you? Are you ready, church? We're going to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can somebody praise the Lord this morning? Come and worship the Lord. Give Him praise. Give Him honor. Give Him worship. Hallelujah. Are you ready to give God glory? Amen. Come on, church. I can't hear you this morning. Are you ready to give God glory? All right, let's try this on before we begin. Has God been good to you? Amen. Has God been good to you? Amen. Can somebody shout amen? amen? Hallelujah. Come on, let's rejoice, church. Here we go. Victory on my mind, say nothing but victory on my mind. Cause I'm never gonna stop, say never gonna stop, never gonna end. Cause today I'm more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror every Come on, say every time.
once again. Because past failures could never stop our cause. Winners always carry men. Come on, say we look, we look, we look it. We look for the Nothing is stopping me, no limits are blocking me, for this is my destiny. Say, there's only one greater than me. Say, because no this is my destiny. Come on, only you say, say nothing. Say this is my destiny. Come on, say, say nothing. This is my destiny. Come on, say, there's only one greater. There's only one greater. Say, say, there's only one greater. Come on, say, say, say. There's only one way. One more time, one more time. Say, there's only one. Because we are. We are. Say nothing. Because we are. Somebody shout Jesus! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Can I, can I see my overcomers in the house of God this morning? Can I see my overcomers? Just show your hands unto the Lord. Come on, let me see you clap for Jesus. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit concerned for those of you that, have, that are not clapping. Your time is coming. Maybe not clapping because she haven't received anything. But look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I saw you. Your time is coming. Can somebody shout Jesus? Can somebody shout praise the Lord? Now I know a lot of you have been fasting. A lot of you have been praying and asking God for wonderful things. Remember, the Bible said God gives you the desire of your heart. But there needs to be a sacrifice from your side. Now, for those of you that feel that there's a breakthrough in your life this morning, and you feel and you know that God has done a good thing, I want to see you dance in the presence of the Lord. This is your dance floor. This is your celebration this morning. Hallelujah. I want to see my believers in the house of God that is not shy to dance like David danced. Because the Bible said David danced in the presence of the Lord. Can I see my Davids here? Hallelujah. I want to see you dance in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now come on, let's go. Here we go now. Yeah. It goes like this, it says, et jo to kom sen se hunter. Get your liver and say under Far on bute your book over Where it and it hate I'm gonna say it again, say Dear 
Here we go, say! Just help me one more time. Everybody said, Dear, dear. His glory comes down. Hallelujah. Are you still blessed, Church of God? Can we just celebrate Jesus this morning? Now, church, the chains that have been holding you bound, they're broken in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Now, church, do we have anybody who's here for the first time? You're brand new in glory, divine. You're visiting us. Can you please stand? We would love to welcome you. Hallelujah. Let's welcome our sister over here. Amen. Our sister there, our sister as well. Come on, church. Let's give them a glory divine welcome. Hallelujah. Once you received your gift, you may be seated. To those that are visiting us for the first time, glory divine, once again, is a place to call home. Hallelujah. If you are online and you are tuning in for the first time, we also want to welcome you, and we know that you're going to be blessed, amen. Now, Church of God, I'm going to call upon our sister Yolanda, hallelujah, and she's going to bless us with encouragement and tithes and offering. Can we welcome her, hallelujah? Good morning, Church. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, I'd like to thank my spiritual parents for this opportunity and also a very warm welcome to all our online viewers. The importance of giving in God's kingdom. My scripture reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. You shall remember the Lord your God for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. God gives us the blessing of being able to work, earn, save, spend, and accumulate wealth. We do this for our children, for our community, and for ourselves, but we also do it to honor God as faithful stewards. We joyfully worship God by giving back to him from what we have earned so that the church can do meaningful work for God's kingdom, our home, Lord, glory divine, amen. In giving, we are honoring God. Proverbs 3, verse 9 to 10. <clears throat> Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. We see here that giving to the Lord is an act of honor. It is a way of thanking God for all that he has provided in our lives. He supplies all our needs by his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And the least we can do is honor him with the first fruits of our increase. Amen? The Lord says, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. If you honor God with your finances and stay faithful to him, he will bless you financially with your vats overflowing. Amen. Church, Give what's in your heart. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Paul says the source of our motivation should be the heart, not out of necessity. Giving to God is a show of love and honor to God from the heart. Paul also says that when we give, we should not give grudgingly or with an attitude, but with cheerfulness. Church this morning, 
How would it feel to you if someone presented you with a gift, but with a selfish heart, told all their friends how they were forced to give you that gift? That wouldn't feel too good, would it? So today, give what is purposed in your heart. For God so loved the world. My scripture reading is taken from John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Most of us have heard this verse before, but sometimes it takes reading a couple of times to unlock the meaning of that verse. So I'm going to read it again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God so loved us that he gave. And not only that, he gave us his very best, his son. Amen? It is God's very nature to give to his children. Not only this, but we can also see the reason he gave. Because he first loved us. So the nature of God's giving is rooted in his unconditional love to us. Can you agree with me this morning, church, that we serve an amazing God? Amen. 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 We all have the opportunity to imitate God through our love and put that love into action in our giving just as he did for us. Amen. Amen. To all our online viewers, the banking details will be displayed on screen, so into good soil. Thank you. Amen. We're going to ask our sister Renola to pray for the tithes and offering. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, I bow down before your throne of grace and mercy, Father God. I thank you for every single person that is found in your house today, those who are online, Lord Jesus, for those who have decided and purposed in their heart to sow into your kingdom. I pray and I thank you, Father God, for their reward will be good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, Father God. We thank you for over blessing, overflowing blessings that is our portion. Lord Jesus, for those who do not have to give, Lord, I pray that you will bless them so that they can in turn be a blessing in Jesus' mighty name. I pray. And I thank you. Amen. Amen. To our online viewers, our banking details are on the board. To you that are here, the baskets are at the front. Don't miss out this opportunity. Come and sow in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. What he said he will do He's gonna fulfill every promise to you Don't give up on God Cause he won't give up on you Say he's able
Church. Um, my name is Kogi Naidu and I bring you greetings from Durban. Last week dad mentioned there will be a lady coming from Durban and that lady is myself. Um, I thank you my spiritual parents for adopting me and for giving me this opportunity to share my testimony. Um, I didn't know Glory Divine existed until June when I was helping someone deal with grief. And they sent me a clip, and that was during the fast, the first day of your fast. And he sent me this clip and said, please, you need to watch this apostle. He's something else. I went on, I watched it, and I began the fast with you guys. And on that Sunday, I sent Dad a message, a very lengthy message, explaining who I am and my situation. And lo and behold, I didn't even realize, you know, Dad will call me. But he did call me that Sunday after service, and he spoke to me. And since then, he's been praying with me, encouraging me, uplifting me. Uh, in a nutshell, I've lost two adult children, and so I've been through hell and back. No parent should lose a child. And um, I've, I've lost my husband last year. I was literally stripped by family members, my business, my motor vehicles, and everything. There came a point where I became so despondent, and at that particular time, Dad came in my life. You know, he speaks about uh, destiny helpers and divine relationships. And God has placed him in my life at a very uh, important time. And um, I was on the brink of suicide. Yes, I was. I, couldn't, I still can't deal with the grief of losing my two children. But what keeps me going is I have two orphan grandchildren that I have to raise. And I am doing that from having... SUVs and convertibles, I was stripped to nothing. There came a point where I don't even know where I'm going to get my next meal to feed the kids. Dad sowed into my life. But I, last week when Dad spoke about the truck and, you know, we need money for instruments and so forth, I never had money. But I already purposed it. I said, you know what, I'm going to Joburg and I'm going to have the money to sow into Glory Divine's truck. And uh, it so happened during the third day of my fast, and I couldn't fast that day because I had laryngitis and I, had on, as I was on meds. And I told dad that. He said, you know, you need to keep yourself hydrated and so forth. And on the third day, the judge ruled in my favor that everything that belongs to me needs to be released. Amen. And I always cling to the scripture, Job 13, 15, where he says, you know what, even though you slay me, I will still trust thee. I have become like the female version of Job, literally. And today, it's my honor and privilege to present Dad and Glory Divine 150,000 rand towards the truck.
Can we give the Lord a loud hand? Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning, church. I greet my spiritual parents in the name of Jesus. I greet you all of us. I thank God for everything that is done in my life. Joshua 24, 15 said, Me and my house we will save the Lord. Uh, uh, the fasting started on Monday. So 2 o'clock, I start to pray to God. I communicate with God that the things that I always want in my life. And I pray also my family. So on Tuesday, I go and drop the CV somewhere of the places. So wherever I go there, they just, uh, I start the interview, I read the exams. So the next morning, it was Wednesday, then I start a new job. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus never fails. Hallelujah. Do we have one more before we continue? Let's welcome our sister Tuli. Hallelujah. Yes, sister Davis, amen. I greet God and greet my, my parents. I love you so much, mom and dad. There's a reason that I call mom and dad. There's a reason, but I'm not going to go there. Uh, dad taught us that um, when you become closer to God, you'll get so many challenges, which is, it was left and right, left and right challenges in my life, sickness, and there was a time that I SMS uh, Renola Sugunan Muna, and she didn't see my message, and I phone, and I, you know, like shouting, why don't you answer my, 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 um, my, my call. She said, I didn't see Sister May, and I started on and on, and then she was like, don't say, don't talk like that, Sister May. I said, I, man, and I thank God that you use a young woman, because the Bible said, the young, young man and a young woman, they'll become uh, prophets and the old men and the old women they'll become a dreamer I thank you so much God used to use you, he will use you mightily thank you Nora good morning church I'd like to greet my heavenly father and our pastor and lady Nisha uh, last year in August, I went for an, a yearly pap smear, and I discovered that I had BP. It was like high, about 145. And I've been going for checkups month after month after month for treating this BP. Oh, I couldn't believe it. Uh, Two months ago, it was skyrocket that they said that I will be admitted to hospital. Believe me, I don't like hospitals. I don't like hospitals at all. So last month, I also went again to, for checkup for the BP. It was at about 100 and, 149, if I'm not mistaken. And then I prayed to God. I said, God... Uh -uh, I don't accept this. I really don't accept BP. I don't know because like what I know is that I only knew that BP was for grannies and grandpas, but not yeah, young children like me. Yeah. Last week, last week Thursday, I went for the BP again for checkup. When I left home, I said, God, in your word, in Isaiah somewhere, it says, by your stripes I am healed. I don't want this BP in my body. It has to drop today. It's now or never. As I went there for the checkup, yeah, my heart was pounding. It was saying, oh, it will be. Like my, the voice was saying to me, ah, it will be 104 days usual. Uh, next time, uh, you are definitely going to be admitted to hospital. Guess what? When they checked me, it was 129. So the sister said that only I'm going to be checked next year again in January. So thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Good morning, my mom and dad. I was in the name of Jesus Christ. Then Tuesday, I went to the hospital to see the doctor. Thank you very much. Thank God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. While you remain seated, Church of God, we've announced, I'm sure many know that October is Pastors Appreciation Month. Hallelujah. Does everybody know that? And we thank God for blessing us with such amazing spiritual parents. So, Dad, we have a small gift or surprise for you. Please turn your attention to the screen, Church of God. We just want to tell you how much we thank you, love you, and appreciate you. What's up, beautiful people? Trust you keeping highly favored and blessed. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 12. Dear brothers and sisters, honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. For they work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. The Bible furthermore tells us in 1 Timothy 5 verse 17, They who labor in the word and doctrine are worthy of double honor. Double, double, double. So our dad is certainly worth double honor. I mean, he's worth double, triple, quadruple. And, uh, I don't even know what comes after that, but he's worthy of it. I'll tell you that. So we thought to ourselves, with it being Pastors Appreciation Month, we thought, you know what? Let's ask the entire leadership in 10 seconds, 10 seconds, if they could tell us, what does dad really mean to them? And uh, this is what they had to say. Let's check it out. Hello, Dad. We don't want to miss this opportunity in wishing you a very happy Pastors Appreciation Month. We appreciate you because you are consistent. Consistent in everything that you do, especially praying for us, teaching us, as well as encouraging us. May God bless you. Hi, Pastor Brian. This is just a little token of my appreciation. Thank you for all your teaching and your wisdom that you share with us. I really appreciate it. God bless. Happy Pastors Appreciation Month. May God give you wisdom and strength and use you in mighty ways. Thank you for everything you do. We love and appreciate you, Pastor. Glory be to God. Today, I just want to thank my spiritual father, Apostle Ryan, and the First Lady, Nisha, and the entire royal family. Dad, on behalf of my family, we just want to say thank you for everything that you have done for us. We appreciate you, and may God richly bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Dad, for always being a prayer away, a phone call away. Whenever we need you, you are there, and thank you for your strength. Your strength amazes us, and we will never thank God enough for your life. Thank you for always playing with me. I love you. Dad, we want to just, I just want to say thank you so much for always being here for me, for my family, for each and every one of us right across the whole world. You are really a dad. So I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, also what for me just stands out, you know, as the word of God says, you know, God knows each and everybody by name. And you know us, each and every one of us of us by our names. When I serve and I look at you, Dad, and I see there you going in between the chairs, and you know exactly who is there and who's not in church, and you know them by name. When you come already by the 10th name, oh my goodness, I don't even think I'll remember the first. So I just want to say thank you so much. God bless you. We love you. I salute you. This is Apostle. We value and appreciate you. May you be phenomenally blessed and highly graced. Thank you so much. Dad, I'd like to appreciate and honor you for your endurance as our spiritual leader. Thank you for encouraging me to grow in my spiritual and personal life. May God bless you and your ministry. I just want to take this time to thank you, Dad, for everything that you've done in our lives, the continuous prayers, the counsels, the mentorship. It's been an honor sitting under your word, under your mentorship, under your counsel. I just want to say that just know that you are loved, you are appreciated, and yeah, thank you for everything. Dad, we are grateful for the faithfulness, for the call of God in your life. You are always leading us in the right direction. We are honored to serve along by your side and be a part of what God is doing in Glory Divine World Ministries. We love and appreciate you. Dad has many hats. 
he's a mentor, a spiritual father, but most importantly, he's a father figure to me, someone I look up to. I was looking for a pastor when I found a father. I was looking for someone to look up to when I found a true leader. I was looking to be taught when I found understanding in your teachings. I was looking for a church when I found a home. We hope you realize how appreciated you are. Thank you, Dad, for everything you've done for us. And uh, we love and pr- appreciate you. Uh, God bless. We cherish you. Thank you for everything. I'd like to thank Dad and the good lady, especially for my manager. I'd like to thank you, Dad, for so many things that you've done in our lives. Especially, I do so many problems, especially in my family. I'd like to thank you, Dad, to pray for us, my, my God, in the name of Jesus. Mungadi mesia ela moya ohala lela. I like to this this time to so I to appreciate our 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 spiritual death, Ran Sukunan. For being us every day, he he gave us the the daily food every day. We know how to be strong. He teach us to be to be the strong leaders. Uh, uh, Apostle Ryan. Uh, he, 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 he didn't have any excuse to be in the church. And you know the times, he, he never been late. He know, which means he know what he's doing. So, we, we learn a lot from him. A leader lead by example. So, I'd like to take this, this, this opportunity to, 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 to thank our, our, post, our, our, our Apostle Ryan for being us this day always, each and every day. So that is why even today, we are still, we are still strong. Hi, Dad. I just want to take this time to appreciate you. Thank you for being a great mentor and a leader who's patient and kind. I pray that God continue this great work that he has started in you. And I pray that he bless you with many, many, many more years to come. We love and appreciate you. Muni Warini. To our spiritual dad, we just want to say thank you and wish you a happy process appreciation. You mean so much to us and what's going to describe how much you do for us and how much you mean for us. So we just want to say we appreciate you because you set the example for us and you always follow it. We would like to thank you for all the teaching, guidance, and support. We are very lucky to have you. We are blessed to have you, and we appreciate you. Happy Appreciation Month to our pastor. I just want to say how thankful and grateful I am for a pastor who has brought me closer to God. We couldn't have achieved our blessings without you. Dad, we would like to take this opportunity to appreciate you, my wife and I, for everything that you have been doing for us. You are preaching, your word of encouragement, your prayers, your discipline, all this has transformed our lives. It's through your prayers that God has blessed us with three children. And it is your sponsorship that I was able to obtain a degree in theology. Time will not allow me to say everything, but all what I can say is that God richly bless you and I salute you. Thank you this pastor's appreciation month every day. We just want to thank you for the praise, the teaching, the preaching, the encouragements. And we also just want to say thank you to your family. May God bless you more and more. Stay blessed and safe. Thank you for being such a dependable leader. We are grateful for your leadership as well as the countless sacrifices throughout the years. Praying God's riches, favor and blessing over your life. 
Apostle Ryan Suknalan to me he means a leader, a good shepherd, and a mentor. The headman Nisha, we might not show you every day how much we appreciate you, but from the bottom of our hearts we say thank you for everything you do, what you say, what you give from your heart to us. We appreciate it, we say thank you. I just want to take this moment to acknowledge the spiritual father in my life. Dad, thank you so much for all your prayer, your love and your support. We truly appreciate and love you. Thank you, Dad, for always teaching us the Word of God, for also teaching us the practical application of the Word, also teaching us to walk in the vision. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Dad, for your daily encouragements. Your soul food is what fuels our tanks and keeps us moving. May God richly bless you as you continue to be a channel of blessing. God bless you. Greetings, everyone. As you all know, it's Pastor's Appreciation Month, and we would like to acknowledge our dad, Apostle Ryan Zubinian. Thank you, Dad, for being our prayer warrior, for teaching and disciplining us. Thank you for always checking in on us, no matter how busy you are. We love and appreciate you. Thank you, Dad, for always encouraging us through your daily soul food. We really appreciate the time and effort you put in. God bless. Dad, I'd like to give you honor and appreciation for always blessing us with profound sermons. I'd like to appreciate you for emphasizing how important it is to be spiritually orientated and being sensitive to the Word. Thank you, Dad, for guiding and teaching us, not only in our spiritual life, but in our personal life as well. And as you always say, Muri Wadimi! Wow, Church of God, that was amazing. And our man of God is certainly worthy of double honor. So if you'd like to say thank you to our dad and you'd like to sow a seed of honor, you can do so by sowing into his personal account that's on the screen. You can take a photo of that for later. My time is up. I need to go. Trust you have been blessed. Dad, we love you. We appreciate you. We honor you. We salute you, true man of God. Bye. Hold on, hold on, wait a minute. We're not done yet. There's still one more member of the family who hasn't said anything yet. But since she can't speak, Dad, she came up with the song for you. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> and put our hands together and show some love and appreciation to our dad and our mom, hallelujah. We thank them and we appreciate you. Come on, you can do better than that, hallelujah. We are blessed with God's best, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, dad and mom. We love and appreciate you. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Sholin, for putting that together. Can we give him a hand, everybody? Amen. Glory to God. Church of God, before we go into the word and before we are blessed by the word, we're going to go into a time of worship, hallelujah. So with every head bowed and every hand lifted up to Jesus, this is our time to worship, glory to God, hallelujah. Come and worship team with one voice now, we say this is a move. This is a move we waited for. Church of God with one voice. These are the floods we cried out for. Can okay, we lift up our hands in this place this morning? This is a move we waited for. These are the floods we cried out for. This is a move. This is. House, won't you lift up your voices and sing? These are the floods that cry out for. So pour, so pour on yourself. We invite you, Holy Spirit.
God, if you've come expecting something from God this morning, won't you open up your hearts and lift up your voices? Begin to call upon the name of the Lord and declare this. This is a Oh God. and take your rightful place. Oh, Lord. 
Lift up our hands. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Magnify your name, my God. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. We exalt you, mighty God. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us this morning. Come, Holy Spirit. We give you preeminence, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we worship you this morning. We exalt you, my God. There's none like you, there's none like you, there's none like you, my God. We give you praises and honor. Touch us this morning. Spirit of the living God, touch us this morning. Revive us and refresh us this morning. Remove every burdens and every problems and every heartache and every pain and every stoppages and every blockages of God. Break every chain and every shackles, my God. Spirit of the living God, touch us. Refresh us this morning. We exalt you, we enthrone you, we glorify you. You are almighty God. There's none like you, my God. God of the breakthrough. God of mercy. God of grace. God of increase. God of more than enough. We give you preeminence. We apply your precious blood upon every person this morning. Lord, every person will be delivered. Every person will be set free this morning. Every person will be blessed this morning. What you have ordained for them shall happen, O oh God, and no devil in hell can stop it in Jesus' name. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. I declare, I decree and I prophesy, O oh God, that a new beginning a new blessing, O oh God, a new breakthrough shall come upon your children right now in the mighty name of Jesus. It shall happen, O oh God. We submit this meeting into your hands in Jesus' name. Lord, as we get ready for your word 
I pray every ear be attentive, every heart be receptive. I pray every burden be lifted up. I pray that your word will take root and grow. No seed of your word of God will be devoured by the devourer. Every word will take root and grow. Instruct us, O God. Guide us. Rebuke us. Chasten us. Encourage us. But most of all, O God, speak to our situation. Give us direction, God. Give us direction. One word from you can change our life, change our situation, change our future. Heal us and deliver us this morning. Let your anointing and glory be upon us as we wait upon you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, as I commit myself into your hands, may I be a vessel of God to deliver your word this morning. Anoint me. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You may be seated. Are you blessed, church? Amen. Say, I'm blessed. Tell your neighbor you are highly blessed, highly favored. Amen. To sit next to me. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. I want to thank the leadership. I want to thank the praise and worship team and all the other leadership, the stewards and ushers, the parking attendants, the Sunday school teachers, all different departments of God. I want to thank the wonderful club that Sholin put. I was just asking him, I think, yesterday in the car, what are you sitting and doing till midnight in your office? You know, he needs to report to me, what is he doing? He's not telling me what is he doing. And now I know what he was doing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And all the leaders that uh, said a few words, I appreciate you. You know that I appreciate you. You're much appreciated, but above all, God appreciates you. Amen. You are employed in his kingdom. And everybody, you know, I put extra chairs yesterday, a whole lot of extra chairs. And, and God is so good that all the chairs are full. Amen. Glory to God. So in the back, I put all the chairs together, and God is good. So uh, they say a little birdie told you, but no, the Holy Spirit told me. In the mighty name of Jesus, glory to God. Amen. Thank God, Sister Kogi is good. She's the spiritual daughter to me now. Amen. And we appreciate your gift in the kingdom of God. Thank God for opening your way all those delays and uh, a little bit she didn't tell you that she has been going through some assaults you know a lot of oppositions even people were bought off polices were bought off and a whole lot of things in a case and money that was due to her was not being released but i always told uh, god has the final say Amen, in the name of Jesus. And I said that I've never ever seen my God forsake me or never answer his prayer. And thank God it was divinely accelerated. What was due to her came to her. And she honored God and may the Lord bless you until the blessed call you blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Church, I want to get into the word of God. Say, God, speak to me. Not what I want to hear, not what I want to hear, but what you want me to hear. Because this is the seventh day of our fasting, and I believe God has got a word for you, because we need direction from God. We are still on the same theme, a divine restoration for the month of October. I'm going to be concluding that today. But I'm going to be speaking on a title, The Result of Divine Positioning. The result of divine positioning. The Bible says in Joel 2 verse 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. My great army which I sent among you. Hallelujah. Say restoration. Restoration is coming to me. And it's coming to me as my son was saying, double, 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 triple, whatever, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus. And nothing can stop it because God has ordained it for you. 
Hallelujah. Yes, the devil will tell you, you're not educated, you got this experience, you lack this, and it might not happen, but I'm here to tell you it's going to happen in the name of Jesus. It's going to happen. Nothing can stop it. Hallelujah. Amen. So God is promising in this verse that he will restore us. Hallelujah. The word restore is the word shalom. Many of you know shalom means peace. I think most of you recognize this word shalom. Many of us use that word. You have come across that terminology. Hallelujah. Amen. The word is used to describe completeness. It's used to describe peace. It's used to describe healing. It's used to describe restoration. Hallelujah. Say the shalom of God is coming upon me in the mighty name of Jesus. It's used to describe retribution, repayment. Hallelujah. Amen. So God is saying that I will restore to you the years that these insects have destroyed. And if you take and relate insects into your life, it can be people, it can be whatever that you are being facing in your life that has hurt you, that has wounded you, that has stopped your blessing. Hallelujah. God is saying he's going to restore. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So I pray that God is going to have the final say upon your life. It doesn't matter about your situation. It doesn't matter about your location. It doesn't matter. The final word is a and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say divine positioning. You are in glory divine right now and I believe you are divinely positioned right now to receive the portion that God has ordained for you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So there is a literal meaning in this verse. Amen. The literal meaning in this verse which is that God will restore the land that the insects have destroyed. That is the literal meaning, hallelujah. We can go deeper into spiritual meaning and I'm going to come to that, hallelujah. But there is also a personal message in this verse. Amen. The message for me, a message for you, hallelujah. That is why the insects are named, amen. Hallelujah. Say God will destroy every insect in my life. Sometimes people become an insect. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray the wrath of God come upon everybody that is trying to destroy your life. That they will experience the wrath of God. They will get down on their knees and they will repent and they will turn to God in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So the enemy may use the locust. Because if you look at the different insects that are used, I preached this on a series before, but I don't have time to get into it. But when you look at the different nature of these insects, it relates to different type of problems. It relates to different type of adversity that comes upon you. So when you look at, hallelujah, the enemy may use the locust against us and try to drown out the small voice of God locust is a hindering force in your life and I pray and I prophesy whatever is blocking your vision and blocking your hearing from hearing God's voice and hearing his instruction right now may the scales fall off hallelujah may the anointing of an almighty God come upon you hallelujah you will hear the voice of God in clarity hallelujah in the mighty name of Jesus. So he may send the canker worm to discourage us and cause us to lose hope. So the canker worm is a representation or a resemblance of another attack coming your way. Hallelujah. Where you get into discouragement. You get into despondency. The spirit of hopelessness gets you. As our sister said right now, she had a suicidal spirit and God put her into my life or put me into her life so the word of God can be ministered. Hallelujah. How many of you know that the word of God has power? The word of God can turn your situation around. The word of God 
can give you hope in a hopeless situation. The word of God can give you help in a helpless situation. But most of all, the word of God can revive and refresh you. Hallelujah. And give you once again hope to go on. Glory to God. Glory to God. The caterpillar to devour us and create fear. Now all these insects resemble certain attacks in our life. How many of you are seated here? You have fear. You have uncertainty. There are certain things that is bothering you right now. I'm here to tell you, you are at the right place. You are at the right time that God can restore you. You are positioned right to prosper. You are positioned right to hear the God's word upon your life. Hallelujah. And the palm worm to fill us with grief and sorrow. Hallelujah. That we are cut off from the good that life has to offer. Hallelujah. Yet Joel, in the midst of all this, prophesied that if we repent, if we turn to God, God will bring the shalom peace upon us and God will bring restoration. May you at this moment take a second and say to God, 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 I repent. Forgive me if I went wayward. Forgive me if I backslided. Forgive me if I have taken matters into my own hands. Forgive me, hallelujah, if I have become lukewarm in your work. Forgive me, O oh God, and restore the joy of my salvation once more in Jesus' name. Glory to God, hallelujah. So that peace and healing can come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know how the enemy has disfigured you. I don't know what you have been through. I don't know, but God knows. Every person that is seated here, God knows exactly what you are going through. And he has the right solution for every one of you. Hallelujah. Amen in Jesus' name. So keeping in mind our October theme, hallelujah, divine restoration. Now let's get deeper into this title, divine positioning, hallelujah. I believe that God wants to divinely position a lot of you that are seated here. Because I always say, hallelujah, provision is found on the road to purpose. And if you are on a different road, you are struggling and your, your resources and your provision is not coming to you because you are wrongly positioned in life. May the Lord Lord, right now, hallelujah, guide you to be divinely positioned so the blessings of the Lord can overflow, so that destiny helpers can come your way, so your promotion can come, so your business can prosper, so uncommon ideas can come to you, and you will be the head and not the tail. You will lend and not borrow. You will be above and not below in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. So here we see Elisha received a double portion of Elijah's anointing. Hallelujah. I'll go into the scripture just now. Because Elisha walked in purpose and he walked in restoration and he was positioned right. Tell your neighbor, be positioned right. Hallelujah. If you are positioned wrong, hallelujah, and positioned with wrong people, whatever is ordained by God shall not come to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Was it easy? Was it without obedience or sacrifice? Definitely no. Elisha had to go through a lot, and I'll, I'll explain that a little later. Elisha went through a process of maturity while serving as a son. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor you got to have a son spirit. You got to have a daughter spirit. Hallelujah. In order to receive from the Father, you got to have a son spirit. You got to be a son to the Lord Jesus Christ. You got to be a daughter to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you take me as your spiritual father, you got to have a son spirit. You got to have a daughter spirit to receive from the grace and the anointing that God has bestowed upon me. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
It's time to move from congregation. It's time to move from being a visitor. It's time to move from being a leader to the position of sons and daughters in the ministry. Hallelujah. Because once you become a son and a daughter, you move into a different dimension of operation. Hallelujah. Amen. Because some people, amen, can know me for 10 years and some people can know me for 5 years. But you don't have a son relationship. You don't have a covenant relationship with me. And that is why you come to church and you go out and you receive nothing. But somebody can come yesterday and they catch the spirit of a daughter and they catch the spirit of a son and they draw from the grace that God has given me and the prayer is answered within a week and within two weeks hallelujah it's important to have that spirit and that covenant relationship hallelujah sons and daughters buy into the ministry i'm talking about positioning hallelujah you gotta be positioned spiritually you gotta be positioned right in the church you gotta be positioned right in your relationship between your spiritual father and being a son and a daughter hallelujah amen sons and daughters become ministry partners uh, they become ladder holders for the visionary or the apostle of the church uh, they become one strong family united together hallelujah they protect pray for and guard the church uh, against uh, intruders and against those that want to cause division in the body of christ uh, sons and daughters graduate above the level of congregation uh, and visitors hallelujah the burden of the ministry becomes their burden they become effective and productive in growing in the ministry they don't partake in gossip but become instruments to build unity in the body of Christ sons and daughters don't take offense and leave the church Elisha had a sonship spirit with his spiritual father Elijah hallelujah you don't see my son staying with me because I scold him. I'm a disciplinarian. If something is wrong, I, I, I speak it out. Same time, it needs to be put right. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. You don't see my son saying, no, no, no. Oh, come on. I'm, I'm leaving the house and going away because you scolded me. Or you disciplined me. Hallelujah. Because he's my son. And that's how in the church, if you have a son spirit and a daughter spirit, one day I will rebuke you. I will discipline you. The word will be hard. I will call you and reprimand you. You don't leave the church because you have a son and a daughter spirit. And you take the rebuke and say, thank God it is coming from my spiritual father. It's for my benefit. It's for my growth. Hallelujah. And you receive it in the mighty name of Jesus with love. Sorry to say today, hallelujah, amongst leaders and among congregation, the small things that offend you, you hip, skip, and jip, but you don't know that you are divinely dispositioning yourself. You are breaking away from destiny helpers. You go out and you struggle in life, hallelujah, because where God has placed you, God will provide for you. But sometime our character defects needs to be addressed, hallelujah. Because our character defects is the cause of our problems. And I pray this morning that any character defects that you have, may the Holy Spirit address it. May the sandpaper of God sharpen all those rough edges that you will become who God wants you to become. You will be able to take rebuke. You will be able to take instruction. You will be able to be teachable. And you will become who God wants you to become in Jesus name tell your neighbor don't be a crybaby hallelujah amen so Elisha had a sonship spirit with his spiritual father hallelujah say divine positioning amen Elisha received a double portion of anointing but he also operated in the glory the anointing upon the life of Elisha did not just come through following Hallelujah. He had a servant's heart, served like a steward. Hallelujah. Amen. And he had the spirit of a son. Hallelujah.
Amen. One day I am 56 years old. If I'm 66, 70 years, and 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 uh, and I want to hand the baton of glory divine to somebody. Hallelujah. I will always hand it to a son. Hallelujah. Not to a gifted person. You can be gifted. Hallelujah. Amen. You'll pray for people. Hundred people fall down. Amen. That is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for somebody. Hallelujah. That's got my spirit. Somebody that's got my heart. And this 22 years that I put my heart into glory divine and the years to go come to build this church, to build it globally. I know that my spirit is going to go. Hallelujah. God said to Moses, take your spirit and put it upon 70 people. Hallelujah. They think like Moses. They act like Moses. They work like Moses. And if Moses is not there and they are working, it is like Moses is there. Hallelujah. They will not break the work of God. They will build the work of God. So a lot of people come to the church sometimes. They come gifted. They have high positions. Hallelujah. They want to get onto the pulpit. They want to do this. They want to do that. I said to them, sit down for three months. Sit down for six months. I want to test your spirit. This is the body of Christ. This is the body. We cannot hurt the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. You scream loud. Amen. You preach loud. You jump loud. And people get excited and all this. That is not what God is looking for. The Bible says you shall be known by your fruit, your character, not your gift. Amen. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the other church, when we were in the other building, hallelujah, a doctor and his wife came. Amen. Driving lovely posh cars and they entered. Not even three weeks after the doctor's wife came and said that I want to do tights. Hallelujah. Amen. I was doing that in the other church. Can you give me an opportunity to do tights? I said, no, you, your guy's got to sit down for about six months. I need to check where your heart is. I don't allow people on the pulpit. This is holy ground. Hallelujah. Amen. Next week they left the church. Hallelujah. So what did they come for? In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In this church, we don't look for positions. We don't look whether you are a multimillionaire and we make you sit in the front or sit in the back or whatever. I got business people here that are 15 years that are sitting in the back. Hallelujah. In the mighty name. We look at your heart. We look at your heart. If your heart is right, hallelujah. And if your, if your heart is in the ministry, yes, you will be sitting in the front. In the mighty, because you're interceding. Hallelujah. You're interceding for the growth of the kingdom of God. Divine positioning is very important. Very important who even is positioned in the front row of your church. Hallelujah. Amen. You understand? Amen. So Elisha passed the obedience test before he was positioned to become one of the greatest prophets. Hallelujah. He was divinely positioned before he became one of the greatest prophets. Elisha did double the miracles of Elijah, his father. Hallelujah. Amen. The first test, I'm going to go through some tests. Hallelujah. That Elisha had to go through. The first test was in Gilgal. Listen to me. And many of you are going to go through this. I pray that God is going to give you wisdom. Hallelujah. That you don't hip chip and skip. You don't get angry with God. You don't get impatient with God because God's working is different and everything that God works in your life is for your benefit. Hallelujah. I'm so sad sometimes that people, hallelujah, are Christians and they start going through problems and the next thing I hear they're going to temples and sangomas and witchcraft and the problem become more serious. Come on somebody, you got to hold on to Jesus, hallelujah, in your dark days, in your trying times, in your testing time because God is faithful. If there is a delay, God is talking to you through your delay. In the mighty name of Jesus. 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 1 and 2. The first test of Elisha was in Gilgal. 2 Kings 2 verse 1 to 2. And my reading is taken from New King James Version. And it came to pass. When the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven. By a whirlwind. That Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Then Elijah said to Elisha, stay there, please, stay there, please. For the Lord has sent me to battle. 
But Elisha said, listen to this. Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to battle. How many people leave the leader when there's one small problem? Hallelujah. Yeah, we look at Elisha, hallelujah, and Elijah, his spiritual father there, and said to Elijah, Elisha, point blank, you stay here, I'm going. Hallelujah. But because of the son's spirit, hallelujah, Elisha said, I will not leave you, I will come with you. Hallelujah. One of the meanings of the word Gilgal is circle. Hallelujah. The word Gilgal, one of the meaning is circle. Hallelujah. If Elisha should have stood back and said, my father doesn't want me to come and he should have felt offended and felt like a victim, Elisha should have been going in circles in his life. Hallelujah. How many of us are going in circles because we didn't hear to the voice of God the very thing that was supposed to build you up you turned against that and that is why you are in a situation right now and your life is in a circle. I pray God reveals to you, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus, where you have to make right. Sometimes you got to go to your boss and make right. Sometimes you got to go to your husband and make right. To your wife and make right. To your pastor and make right. Somewhere along the line, you got to make right, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus. And I believe I have the Holy Spirit, just like Paul said, he has the Holy Spirit. And I'm talking to you right now through the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus. If you want to get angry, get angry with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So I believe that whatever is displeasing to the Lord in your heart has come a full circle today. In the mighty name of Let me turn that a little bit of a more positivity, a more positive note. And I declare that over your life. That whatever online I'm speaking to you, my soul food addressed it. Everybody needs a spiritual father. Hallelujah. God has ordained the fivefold ministries. God is a God of protocol. God, hallelujah, called Adam and Eve and gave Adam and Eve dominion to subdue, to be fruitful, to take charge of the earth. Adam and Eve sold this right to Satan, but Jesus bought that rights again and restored it back to you you are called to take dominion hallelujah in the mighty name of Jesus and God wants to work through you hallelujah there is an assignment and there is a purpose that is ordained for you and God is waiting for you hallelujah amen to be sensitive to his instruction so he can use you mightily for his kingdom So in order to operate under the glory, you need covenant relationship. Hallelujah. Covenant relationship. God talked with Adam and Eve. When God wanted to deliver the children of Israel, God raised up Moses. After that, he raised up Joshua. God wanted his seed to be blessed. God raised up Abraham. Hallelujah. And when God wanted to send his son, he raised up Mary. God works through men. God works through women. Hallelujah. In the mighty. Otherwise God will just step. Bypass men and women and work himself. No. On earth at the moment the agent of God is you. Hallelujah. The agent of God is you. But you can only be used mightily by God. If you can hear to his voice. Amen. If you are obedient to follow instruction and go through the process without rebelling. Hallelujah. Many of you have dispositioned yourself and you are not at the right position. May I pray that you position yourself right. That you don't have to struggle in life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In order to operate under the glory, you need covenant relationship. Covenant relationships are divine connections. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes we are too quick to leave a ministry that was meant to be a destiny link. Hallelujah. Yes, there are people that has left. 
people that I've invested 15, 20 years got offended for small things and they have left. Hallelujah. I know as a spiritual leader, I know as a spiritual father, they have made the wrong decision. I will stand here in the presence of the Holy Spirit and I will tell you they made the wrong decision. Hallelujah. Amen. I know it. I advise them and they still want to do it. Hallelujah. After five years, they will come and bow down at the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. But sometimes, you know, as children of God, we need to swallow our pride and say, God, humble me that I can come back. I can come back to the church, that the church was a destiny link. The spiritual father that cared for you, that nurtured you, that prayed for you, that visited you. Hallelujah. That I will make right. Hallelujah. Amen. And get back on. Hallelujah. The bandwagon of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. So sometimes we feel we deserve more. Sometimes we feel that we are not getting what God has, uh, in, has, has uh, a portion for us. Hallelujah. Maybe we feel others are treated better. Maybe we feel we are called to preach or sing and we are not getting the chance. Uh, your covenant relationship will be tested. Hallelujah. Amen. Our perception and our assumption and our feeling is not what God wants for your life. Hallelujah. So you have to hear clearly from God for you to understand why God is allowing certain things in our life. I mean, I was 10 days in ICU. I was almost dead. I lost 13 kgs. I'm just building uh, my weight back. Hallelujah. I questioned God many a time. God, why did you allow that to happen? Hallelujah. But in the 10 days, I draw closer to God. In the 10 days, I'm a spiritual giant. Hallelujah. My spirit has been revived. I have close communication with God. Every day I feel his presence. Hallelujah. I receive wisdom. I got direct access to the Father. That 10 days, God got me alone to himself. Hallelujah. So I'm not going to question God. I'm going to raise my hands and say, thank you, Jesus, because everything has a reason. Everything has a purpose. Hallelujah. I'm not going to question you. It's for your glory and something great is going to come out of it in Jesus name. And I can stand here and testify that Jesus is real, that Jesus saves, that Jesus heals. I'm not going to turn my back on Jesus, hallelujah, because he never answered my prayer. I'm not going to turn my back because I had a sickness. I'm not serving God for what I get out of God. I'm serving God because I love him. He paid the price for me. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I serve him because of a relationship. All the other things will come. Hallelujah. But my primary initial objective to serve God is because of my love relationship with him. That my soul, my spirit is going to heaven. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, yes, you're going to be rejected. Hallelujah. You're going to be unwelcome like Elisha. Sometime you're going to be snubbed. You're going to be abandoned in life. We are living in a Babylonian system. Hallelujah. Amen. And sometime you will be snubbed and rejected by the very people you look up to. Hallelujah. The very people that God has placed in your life will snub you, will reject you, will bypass you. But it is your training ground. It is your university. And the rejection is a syllabus of God to promote you, to promote you, and to, for you to walk in the purposes of God. Hallelujah. I pray God gives you wisdom. Don't displace yourself where God has placed you. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. Amen. We must hang on to our destiny links, our destiny helpers, and endure until we have received our double portion. Hallelujah. Never abandon your position because of emotions or you feeling hurt. Hallelujah. Learn to control your emotions. Otherwise, it will unseat you. Hallelujah. From destiny seats. How many of you could have been a manager in your workplace? But your temper, I said your temper, your emotions, 
Hallelujah. You, you could not handle your neighbor getting promoted. You had some envy, jealousy inside of you. May that virus be killed by the Holy Ghost this morning. It's a virus. It kills you slowly. Hallelujah. So I pray any cocos hiding in your heart this morning that, that, that is detrimental to your future. I pray the Holy Ghost doom be sprayed right now. Amen. Don't go get a doom and spray now. You know, like those false pastors. No? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I don't believe in holy soap and all those things. Your hands are anointed. Say, my hands are anointed in the name of Jesus. You just take your anointed hand and lay hands on yourself in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So if we do not pass the test at Gilgal, if we do not pass the test at Gilgal, we will circle once more. Sister Mavis, my spiritual daughter, the same problem every three months. Alka Dreamanda, solve the, solve the problem. Hallelujah, because you did not pass the test of rejection. Hallelujah, amen. You became all worked up because your spiritual father said, no, you're not coming with me home yesterday. I'm taking elder so-and-so or brother so-and-so. Hallelujah. No, you can't do that. Oh, no, that seat is not yours. Your seat is there. Oh, you can't take that parking. Take the other parking. You all hurt. You all fuming inside now. Like a volcano about to erupt. You came in so nice in the church, but you're walking up. The devil has stole your blessing. You just know exactly which button to press to wake you up. Hallelujah. But if you only had a spirit of humility, hallelujah, and you can only know, but that's my spiritual father. His heart is for me. So whatever he's doing, he has heard from God. Let me take you to God in prayer and approach the right way. You will leave out blessed. And your turn will definitely come in the mighty name of Jesus because the spiritual father looks at you and looks at your response. Don't think that I'm not looking. I might be looking that side, but I'm looking, hey, how did this guy respond? The cockers are just coming out showing and the attitude. Look at the eye. If the eye was a knife, I should be stabbed. Hallelujah. Your boss does the same thing. I mean, I have been in the corporate field. I've been one of the first senior managers of a Fortune 500 company with all the great perks and everything before I resigned. I had staff all over the show working for me. And I could easily know which staff is going to walk with me. Which staff, hallelujah, when I turn my back, they're yapping on the other side. You are on eye every day. Somebody is watching. Tell your neighbor somebody is watching. And who knows that somebody can be your destiny link for your next dimension and promotion in your life. So tell your neighbor, watch out. You're on the stage every day of your life. You're on the stage every day of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So God will definitely take you to Gilgal to spring clean your heart. Gilgal is powerful. I can preach an eight-part series on only Gilgal. Hallelujah. But that's not my message. Hallelujah. God will definitely take you to Gilgal. Tell your neighbor, you will definitely go to Gilgal. Hallelujah. Some of you may be in Gilgal right now. Some of you were there last month or last week. Hallelujah. And you made the wrong decision. And you ended up I don't want to say where. Hallelujah. And some of you are going to walk into Gilgal. Amen. Say your neighbor, thank God you prepared. And you know how to respond in your Gilgal. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. If the past heart issues were related to rebellion or a lack of respect for authority, he will do whatever is necessary to bring us into alignment. Hallelujah. God will do whatever is necessary, brother, to bring you to alignment. If your past, hallelujah, 
has brought you to a situation because you cannot respect authority. Hallelujah. God will always put an authority over you and stifle you until one day you will submit to authority, you will be teachable and you will become humble and say thank God for authority because your Bible says we must respect an authority and once you learn and your heart comes right, next thing you will become authority over someone else. God will promote you. Unless you pass the test of Gilgal, you will not go to the next level. And I'll explain to you what the next level is. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Most of our problem is a problem of rebellion. Hallelujah. The society, the environment, the unions, everywhere, the political movement, all is teaching you to rebel. And God is teaching you humility. Hallelujah. Humble yourself and you shall be lifted. Not rebel and you shall be lifted. In the kingdom of God, when you rebel, you will be suppressed and demoted. Am I talking to you? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Many of us will be required to overcome obstacles and test before increased anointing can be imparted because the anointing is so powerful hallelujah the anointing destroys yoke when you are anointed by god promotion will come when you are anointed by god your cv will be chosen when you're anointed by god your business will prosper because the anointing flourishes you hallelujah in the mighty name of Jesus. But anointing doesn't come easy. Hallelujah. You cannot come and sing three worship songs and two praise songs and say, I'm anointed. Hallelujah. Your heart connection to God is very important to receive the anointing. If there's rebelliousness in your heart, if there's revenge in your heart, if there's bitterness in your heart, hallelujah, the anointing cannot reside over you. You've got to come to the presence of God, kneel down and say, Lord, there are some issues in my life. I want to leave it in your hands. As long as you leave it into the hands of God, you're not going to be perfect. Nobody is perfect. But as long as you said, oh God, there's something inside of me, I don't like it, hallelujah. I got jealousy against my brother and sister, Lord. Lord, I can't deal with it. I leave it at your altar. In the might on a daily basis and daily you will be anointed and the anointing will open doors for you hallelujah in the mighty i pray for certain things in my life hallelujah i had millions and millions of 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 debts of of commitments and god came through because i pray and i ask god for the anointing and i say lord anointing Open the door of favor for me. Hallelujah. Say, tell your neighbor, pray and seek the anointing. Seek the anointing of God. The anointing can do something where in your life that your education cannot do. Hallelujah. Every day, ask the Lord, because the Bible says, Isaiah 10, 27, it is the anointing that destroys yokes. It is the anointing that heals you, delivers you. Whatever you're praying for, the anointing accelerates it in the mighty name of Jesus. So before increased anointing can be imparted, remember that the anointing comes upon you through a serving spirit. Through a serving spirit. It is important to understand, hallelujah, church, every one of us are called to serve. Serve our brother, serve our sister, serve our community, serve in the kingdom of God. Any, everybody right here, some of you 15 years, but you never lifted up your hand one day to even pick a chair. Like Prof. Devorate. Hallelujah. 15 years in the chair, but you say the, the chairs are all crooked and cockeyed and everywhere, but you'll walk past it, you'll never put it straight. Some of you will walk past and there's papers all over in the church. You will never pick it up. You'll tramp it. You'll kick it and go in your car and vamoose. This is the house of God. And, and what I'm going to preach, the next point. 
I'll bring that message on Sunday. Hallelujah, I don't have time today. Hallelujah, from Gilgal, they went to another place called Bethel. The house of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Because some of you, your breakthrough is not coming because you don't have a servant spirit. The Bible says Jesus humbled himself and took the form of a servant. Hallelujah. He washed the disciples' feet. It's not about the washing the disciples' smelly feet. It's about what Jesus was showing. Humility can go right down. Because your feet is right at the bottom. Hallelujah. Humility strips pride. Strips ego. Strips haughtiness. Hallelujah. Strips every spirit of worldliness. And become humble to serve. And if you have a servant's heart, hallelujah, I'm telling you, whatever is God's will come upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, may you have a servant's heart. May you have a servant's heart. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. Amen. And I'm closing. So God always anoints those who openly or properly position. When it is our season to receive the double portion, make sure you are in the right position. A position of a servant serving in humility. Amen. Everybody cannot be a pastor. Everybody cannot be a singer. Everybody cannot be a musician. But you can be a steward, a financier, or whatever the Lord has laid upon your heart. Every one of you can't play the keyboard, the guitar, the bongos, the drum. Everybody can't stand and sing. But you can be a financier for the kingdom of God. He's still being a steward. You're making the church, the kingdom of God to operate and meet its commitment. Hallelujah. You can come once a week and cut the grass. Once a week you can come and say, let's walk around the church and pick up every paper and clean the place up. The stewards and ashes clean the church every week. Can I join you? Can I bring all the all the detergents that is needed to run this church and clean this church. Can I bring some flowers and put here? You can always serve the kingdom of God some way or the other. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. And it will open up heaven's blessing upon you. Because you are stopping your blessing. You know, I've done so much of things for God. From the time I got saved. And the other church that I was serving, my car was used as a taxi. And I had a Mercedes before I opened this church. Loading about 12 people, going into the squatter camps, informal settlements and picking up people. When I started this church with my wife, my children were small doing the homework, sleeping in the car till 11, 12. We're doing home visiting to get people in the church because I started with not one person. If my leaders can come like that, this church will have three services. Every week we'll have 15, 20 new people. If there's no new people coming every week, there's a dying church. So the leadership needs to question themselves. We've got to witness the congregation needs to question themselves because you're supposed to bring new people. The world is dying out there. And Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. And I serve God. I never take a cent from the kingdom of God. My fuel, my car. Going four in the morning, my wife will tell you, raising funds. I raised nearly 400,000 and build the other church cash where I was serving. That time, now that is like 30 years ago. Four o'clock in the morning, I should drive to far, far out places to raise funds. And you know, you, you, you won't believe it, who gave the most money? Muslims. Muslims gave the most money. I was not shy to ask them for money. And the church was built cash. What are you doing in the kingdom of God? 
What are you doing in the kingdom of God? Are you coming only to receive or are you giving? Because when you give, your hand is open to receive. If you're receiving, it's tight-fisted. In the name of, these are the secrets of prosperity in the kingdom of God. Why am I prosperous? Yes, we got a pound. I went to a hospital. I've got hundreds of thousands of bills that I need to meet. Medical aid never paid. But do I look worried? The source is my God. The source is my God. I don't want to put that burden on the church. Because I know my walk with God. And when I ask my father for something, he always gives. Because I'm a servant. I'm here to serve you. Not for you to serve me. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray you have a servant's heart. And whatever you are trusting God will come to you. Let's stand in the presence of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. After the seven days of fast. This is the message that God gave me. We are going to anoint now. I know the church is full. Fact. Muniwarini. And when I'm going to anoint, you're going to come believing that everything that is holding your breakthrough, everything that is in your heart that is stopping God's best for your life must fall down at the altar. And you walk out free. You walk out free. If you are unemployed, you must walk in your job. If you are single and want to get married, your partner will come. Nobody is too old for a new partner. I want you to lift up your hands. Maybe some of you didn't want to do hear this message, but it's the right message for you. I wish I could have brought another message, but I have to bring what God says me. Some of you are really struggling. I can feel it in my spirit, really struggling. It's because you are trying and trying and trying outside of God. God is saying, rest in me, become consistent in me, and I will open the windows of heaven upon your life. Every day is a struggle. To put food on the table is a struggle. To put petrol in your car is a struggle. Your marriage is a struggle. God is saying the source is me and you're leaving me out and you're struggling to make things right in your life. Turn it around. Turn it around. Number one, we don't make resolutions, we make commitment. Resolutions are made to be broken. Commitment is made to be kept. So today make a commitment that you're going to put God first in your life. I don't want you to become a holy job, carry your Bible to church, at your work, in front of everybody, hey, I'm a Bible reader. No, read your Bible at home, put the word in your heart and carry the word in your heart and go. Number two, ask the Lord to make you emotionally strong because that is where the devil is attacking you. The Lord is showing that is the path that most of you are being destroyed because you're emotionally weak. And the same people is coming and really messing your life. Pressing that same button over and over and over. He who angers you, controls you. He who manipulates you, frustrates you. Divine positioning. Number three. Ask the Lord to position you right. And once you are positioned, don't disposition yourself. 
because your position will be tested your position will be tested number 4 today purpose in your heart that you'll become a son and a daughter in this ministry you'll have a covenant relationship in this ministry so whatever god has graced upon my head the grace and the anointing can flow to you on a take for an example sister kogi will you come here just uh, sister karusha will you come here where were you yeah come balega 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 When you look at these two sisters they're not familiar with me they're not years with me they're months with me somebody told sister kogi to watch this apostle online and she watched and while i was preaching there was a connection there was a connection somebody told Sister Karusha she travels all the way from Midran she was going to another church online she watched me and she came here she made a connection a spiritual connection wasn't familiar with me wasn't familiar with me or oh, this is a pastor we know for 10 years and what i preached they accepted it and they accepted the authority the grace the mantle and the anointing over my head because they were not familiar with it and sister kogi was going through major problem major opposition major people were stopping and blocking her sister karusha was going through major brain operation which she went through and they could not take the tumor out they left some there because it will have affected her whole life she connected with me and then again the tumor was grown to big i told you i told her go for the operation god is going to heal you and after the operation the eyes and everything was affected could not see and then i told her god is going to heal you i had a dream the next day she's testifying i told her she believed it she believed me as a prophet as an apostle and few days after she was completely healed her eyes everything came she believe i'm not talking about the money remember appreciation nobody in the church even on online is obligated to show in my life I'm not a beggar. I'm a child of the most high God. I carry his grace and anointing. Because when you sow in my life, the blessing is coming on you. So she went and sowed in my life that you 1000 rand, not even knowing who I am, just met me a few times. Took all the saving and sowed. Sister Kogi also sowed in my life. beside the 150,000 she sold in in the church now that is a seed because a seed can take the shape of anything the seed took the shape of a healing the seed took the shape of winning the court case and an inheritance coming to her divinely accelerated And last time she came she came with crutches you see how she's walking now no crutches there. why am i saying you this change your heart get a covenant relationship to receive they were not familiar with me and they received in the mighty name of jesus you may see be seated many of you are not receiving because you become too familiar with the grace that i carry but the outside people 
they get touched some of you don't even value the hours that i spend with my soul food i see you going and sharing other people's stuff you don't even share my soul food how can you have a father and son relationship that's dishonor that's disrespect because you are the first person supposed to be eating of the word that i have spent time with god heard from god and i'm feeding your soul it's manna it's fresh manna for your soul and when you have that relationship you receive from god i shouldn't be teaching you this somebody from outside or one of my leaders should be teaching this but sometimes i i have to come in a position to teach it because the teaching don't come so number 4 covenant relationship if you want to receive from the grace that god has given into this house to tap into the house treasures covenant relationship in the mighty name of jesus Can I have another bottle? It was there somewhere that time. No, not that. I need another bottle because they're going to put their request in here before I anoint. The one thing that I want to say to you I'm speaking from my spirit God loves you Every one of you God loves you and he wants the best for you You can walk out of here today and tomorrow your situation can change I prophesy that over you But some of you need to ask God for forgiveness Some of you have to ask God for forgiveness. Spiritual matters are totally different than natural matters. Natural man will tell you different. They cannot advise you. But as I stand under the anointing of God, listen to what I'm saying and your breakthrough will come. Just before I anoint, has anybody got request written? Will you can come and put it in the bottle here please. Anybody got request? Will you just put it in the bottle? Amen. Those that are online, you can just hold your request in your hands. We are going to pray over it. If you have those that are online if you have a little bit of oil just get a little bit of oil in a saucer or something I'm going to pray for that oil and then you can anoint yourself you can take that oil and just put it on your head when I'm anointing the people in the mighty name of Jesus the same power that is here will come into your homes in Jesus name Amen. We're going to anoint and then we're going to pray over the request and we're going to burn the request in the mighty name of Jesus.
all right, we're going to come from this side, this from the beginning, this way, then the next. You can go back on your seat and, okay, there. Amen. If anybody wants to sow a seed, uh, the offering bags are here. You want to seal your anointing or you seal your whatever request in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father God, I come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that the grace that you have bestowed over my life, the anointing of God, I pray as I touch your children, every scales will fall, every chain, bondages of God, spiritual setbacks and spiritual hold. Uh, Stoppages, blockages of God, constraints, restraints of God, monitoring spirits, diabolical assignments, all will be dissolved and they will walk in purpose, provision, in blessing and prosperity. And Father, let your anointing come upon them, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Be anointed in Jesus' name. Be anointed in Jesus' name. Be anointed in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name. Be anointed in Jesus' name. Be anointed in Jesus' name. Anointed in Jesus' name, be 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 anointed in Jesus' name. Just hold on one minute. Yeah. Those that are online, if you have your oil right now, let me pray over it. Heavenly Father, every person that is online right now holding the oil of God, I pray that your anointing be upon that oil that will become the balm of Gilead of God. Lord, whatever sickness, whatever burdens, whatever heartaches, pain, stoppages, blockages of God, all will dissolve right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, amen. And now you can take that oil and anoint it over you in Jesus' name. Amen. Be anointed in Jesus' name. 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 Be anointed in Be anointed in Jesus' name. 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 Be
in the presence of God. There's a new season. There's a new beginning. Remember that four things that I told you, it will give you victory in your life. It might be a little bit difficult to change things, but change is not always comfortable. But it brings forth the best result. Best result in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember something, the economy is not good. The future is not bright in this world. But in Christ, God is above the economy of South Africa. There's no recession in the kingdom of heaven. When the world goes down, children of God must prosper. You must have money for your holidays. You must have money in your bank. You must have your own car, your own house. You must have money to fill petrol and go on holidays. That's the plan of God. So I prophesy you get out of struggling street and get into prosperity street in the name of Jesus. Your best days are ahead of you. Your best days are ahead of you. Something that is impossible shall come to pass. In the name of Jesus. Believe me, believe me. I'm speaking to you now as a spiritual father. Under the grace of God. Elijah was a great prophet. But he could not destroy Jezebel. 
It needed an apostolic anointing by the name of Jehu. Jehu to come and destroy Jezebel. So I pray under the apostolic anointing that every change that is tied you untangle now in Jesus' name. Every sickness that is in your bloodstream be purified by the blood of Jesus. Those that are online also. Every monitoring spirit, because some of you are being monitored by devouring demonic forces. No fault of yours is coming from your grandfather and great-grandfather. Let the eyes be blinded now in the name of Jesus. Any witchcraft over you, any spells over you, any diabolical spirit sent be reversed right now in Jesus' name. Anybody that cut a rooster or some fowl or some pig's leg or stitch some muti, let it burn by the fire of God in the name of Jesus. Because you don't know who is against you. And the filthy things people does, but the Holy Spirit knows right now. Some of your doors going to open tomorrow. It's like a remote door. Because I left the best for the last. Because you heard to the word. You heard to the rebuke. You heard to the instruction. Now God is saying, I love you. When I was praying, one of these days I woke up. And I just sat down on my bed. And I saw dark clouds. Pitch dark clouds. In my vision. And suddenly I see the dark cloud is opening and the sun is coming through. There's a breakthrough coming your way. It was a sign. It was a sign that the sacrificial breakthrough fast has broken through the limitation, broken through the boundaries, broken through every evil opposition, and let it rain right now. I can hear the sound of abundance of rain. It's going to pour. Marriages will be restored. Families will be restored. Drug addicts will be restored. Alcoholics will be. Wife abusers will be restored. Men abusers will be restored also. Ah, you don't know about the high hills hiding. And that big spoon hiding and things. My sister come from Phoenix. Stanger, Phoenix, all these places, eh? They'll throw chili powder on you. <laughs> Amen. We're going to pray for this. Can the leaders, all the leaders take it there? I want all the leaders to take the request there, make a circle. And then uh, some of you can go and burn it after the Let's just let us stand as we, is all your bondages in there? All the cocos and cockroaches are inside there. And the Holy Ghost doom is just going to kill it. Give them a mic. All right, we're going to start with the elders. The elders is going to pray over it. First, trample it in the name of Jesus. Put the lids on there, yeah? Amen. Your congregation can stretch your hands also towards it. Let us intercede that you walk out of here problem free. Yes, 
my God. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, my God. Answer, my God. Answer by fire. Answer by fire, oh God. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus this morning, Lord. Father, your word to make your request known unto your God. That you answer their prayer, God. We pray for every miracle that your children are trusting you for, God. We know that you're going to make a way in the name of Jesus. We thank you for answered prayers. We thank you that these are burned by fire. And we thank you that you've made a way in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before the throne of grace, O oh Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, as you commit the request yes, into your hands. God. You will declare, Heavenly Father, yes, that you are the God of the living, Father. not the God of the dead. Father, you will declare, yeah. that you have not come to aid Glory. for angels, Glory. but you come to the aid Glory. of your children. Hear the request, Heavenly Father. Your children have placed them yes, in your hands. You shall come yes, into aid for Jesus. them, O oh God. And the testimony shall come in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that they will prosper in everything that Trust you Jesus. in the name of Jesus, and all the dead clouds have been removed, the yoke has been destroyed in the name of Jesus. Every request is being answered in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. As we agreeing on your word, oh God, Matthew 18 18, that says, Whatever we bind on heaven will be bound on earth, oh God. But now we bind, Father God, every plan and every opposition that is against your children, oh God. We pray right now that we lose your blessings, oh God. We lose heaven's best upon us, oh God. We declare and we decree, Father God, that there is nothing that is too hard for you, oh God. For in your word you say, Lord God, that with man this is impossible, but with you all things are possible, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, for testimonies that are coming through, oh God. We thank you, Father God, for your angels that are being released in the atmosphere, oh God, that is clearing the way for your children right now, oh God. We thank you, Father God, for a fresh anointing, for a glory, for a passion, for a fire, Father God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven, oh God. We stand on your word, Lord Jesus, that says, Father God, that it is saved yesterday, today, and forevermore. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that we will see, Lord God, a manifestation of the supernatural on earth, Lord Jesus. We declare and we decree in Jesus' name. Amen. Every hand stretched out. We declare the death and the burial and the cremation of all your problems in the mighty name of Jesus. Every Father, I come to you in that mighty, matchless, awesome name of God. Lord, as I put my foot upon this request of God, I pray for healing, I pray for deliverance, I pray for breakthrough of God upon your children. Every request is being answered right now by fire. The blood of Jesus is over every problem of God. You know every child of yours that has brought the request right now, oh God, and supernaturally you are granting it right now. I pray your anointing.
anointing that destroys every yoke of bondage to be upon this request right now oh God I pray for an open heaven oh God where doors needs to be open let the doors open oh God where healing is needed let healing come oh God where deliverance is needed let deliverance come where breakthrough is needed let breakthrough come oh God I pray for supernatural intervention oh God in the mighty name of Jesus I pray oh God angels be dispersed right now I pray right now that your spirit will move I pray oh God the testimonies will come your children will rise your children will rise your children will overcome they will have a testimony of God no weapons formed against them shall prosper no tongues raised shall stand you are for them oh God I pray Lord right now their battle has become your battle their problem has become your problem you have taken it right now and you have solved it right now you have given them breakthrough oh God they are rising now they are rising over every obstacle they are rising over every hurdle every constraint every limitation is broken right now I declare right now freedom I declare liberty I declare right now that your children will testify about your goodness father I apply your blood upon this request and every request is granted in the name of Jesus let's give the Lord a hand hallelujah amen can we burn it can we burn it in Jesus name amen you may be seated Amen. Church, are you blessed? You've got to be blessed. Give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Number five is grace. So let me add one more to all those things that I gave you. Do not forsake the gathering of the saints. You can go to job, you can come to church. Make sure you are in the house of God. The greatest, greatest service you can ever give in the kingdom of God is witnessing to somebody. Giving them the love of Christ. Because one soul into heaven, there's crowns added on your name. So humble yourself today. Ask for forgiveness to some people. Some people that you have never witnessed to, you always bypassed. Tell them Jesus loves you. And you'll see how good you'll feel. Because the Holy Spirit just gets excited when you witness. And doors open up. Whenever I get a chance, I witness. I was in hospital, asked my wife, nearly all the churches, the nurses and all were like, they were like saved. Because everybody I was witnessing to, Nearly all the nurses over there, doctors, I witnessed to. In the name of Jesus. Muris Kamviyasne. Wherever you are becomes your platform. And the problems that you are facing will just dissolve. The joy will replace it. And suddenly, you know, if your husband is two-timing you, before he three-times you, he start looking at you, he'll see a glory over you. Even if your wife is two-timing also, why husband only? Sunday they look at you, hey, check this guy out. I never noticed that. God will change things in your life. It all start with the joy inside showing on the outside. It is the best cream, best mascara, best rouge you can ever use. Just be anointed and you will attract in the mighty name of Jesus. So let's meet here Tuesday. I've got a powerful word for you on Tuesday. I'm going to pray for you. I want you to get into Thanksgiving mode. 
All the request you ask for seven days, don't ask God for that request again. Thank Him for answered prayer. Go into your things, even if it takes you a week, thank Him. Thank Him. It shall surely come. Let's stand in the presence of God. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your children, whom you love so much. You started a new beginning in their life, so God. And the blessing shall come, prosperity shall come, healing, deliverance, breakthrough, answered prayer shall come. I pray the love of God, the peace of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us till we meet again in Jesus' name. God richly bless you. Have a wonderful week. Let us meet on Tuesday. God bless you. We invite you to become a partner in our global ministry, which is touching lives and transforming situations all over the world. When you become a partner, you are investing in fertile soil and the Lord will richly reward you with heaven's best. Church banking details are on the screen. And if you'd like to sow a seed of honor, directly deposit it into Dr. Ryan's personal account. For e-wallets, apps like Cash Send, Standard Bank Instant Money, or any other instant cash services, kindly use our church WhatsApp number to send the voucher number as well as collection pin. Because when you sow in good soil, indirectly your money is going to places where you cannot go. When you partner with the Kingdom Vision, God will make sure that your needs are provided for. So sow your seed today.